Evening, Albert. Hello, everybody from the Saliers. Hi, Peter. Can you hear me there, brother? Loud and clear. I can hear you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. I'll just give it a few moments and let's see who's going to be joining us tonight. Hi, Cal, Mike here. Yes, Hello, hi. How are you doing? Michael. Oh, well, thank you. Well, hi. <laughs> right. Yeah, I'm doing all right. Hello, David. Hello.
Okay, slowly, slowly, we're getting some more people on. And uh, evening, everybody. Um, with uh, Menor here in the studio, and uh, the classrooms here in my lounge, and so forth. Uh, they're going to be picking up in a moment. Um, and then we'll get started. Okay, so just give us uh, uh, three more minutes and then we'll start Bible study. Thank you for your patience. Okay, good evening, everybody. Welcome to the study tonight. And um, as you can imagine, this has been quite a week uh, in preparing now um, for the service tomorrow. So um, I had a viewing today, private viewing for the family and close friends. And so that was quite a challenge. And I thank the Lord for his grace and in, in enabling us to go through that. And um, so, yeah, um, we have um, um, what I think should be a, a good service for tomorrow morning. All right. So, uh, Peter, can I ask you to open us in prayer and to lead us in prayer, please, brother? Certainly. I hope I'm close enough to the mic now. Yeah, I okay, can hear you. let's pray. Our gracious God and Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity on this very cold day that thou hast made. Um, thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to thank you, Lord, for the technology that is at our disposal. And as we sit in our warm homes, Lord, we, we think of those who are not so privileged as we are, people that are living in tin shacks and even without a roof over their head, I see so many of them in town. 
every day. Yes, Lord, we are privileged, but thank you also for the privilege that our Lord Jesus Christ has died on the cross. Lost you, Peter. I think your mic got switched off. <laughs> oh, sorry. Okay, you're back on again. So, right. To come well, from what? Jesus dying on the cross, please. Yes, and the privilege, Lord, that we have to to study your word and, and use your word to build us up and equip us for every day to live as your children on this earth. Lord, we, we think particularly of the funeral service tomorrow morning, our beloved brother and sister who has suffered this tremendous loss. We pray, Lord, that you will bless them and keep them upright, even on the most difficult moments in what they are going through. We... Uh, we pray for, for them and all the others, Lord, that we don't even know about who are struggling with problems and, and having to, to seek your guidance and, and help to help them along the, the lanes of life that they are traveling on. Bless our meeting. Bless the word to us, Lord. And will you use Brother Cal to, uh, to equip us with your holy word? Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thanks, Peter. And I see a couple of more have joined us. So now welcome to you all uh, to our Bible study tonight. And uh, uh, from next week, we should do things a little bit different. It's just that there's been a lot of uh, running around behind the scenes and organizing for the service tomorrow, as can be imagined. And um, so we'll have some hymns played, songs played, etc. as we Dig back in the day, in the COVID day, and uh, so we'll get that together um, for next week. So what I would like to do is, uh, if you take your Bibles uh, to Romans chapter 8, Romans chapter 8, and I just want to look at a couple of verses there tonight, and I just want to, I'm going to share my screen, I'm just going to keep, uh, how do I do this, um, okay. screen um, okay. all right um, in answering the question that I've been asked why do these things happen to us in this life why do we have to go through such tragedy and all of that and uh, so in trying to answer somebody the other day, I said, okay, it started in Genesis. It started with sin. Actually, it started before uh, even Adam and Eve. It started with Satan in the heavenlies, um, disobeying God, rebellion against God. And um, that had an effect in the, in the supernatural realm, in the spiritual realm, where Satan rebelled against God with a third of the angels. And they were confirmed in their um, rebellion on that day. And then they were um, cast out of heaven. Um, some of them have been locked away. And they'll be led out in the tribulation period. The rest, the demons, are around. And so sin came into the heavenly body. Then uh, Satan came down to uh, Eve and Adam. And sin entered into the human race. And sin corrupted things as they were on earth. Man was given dominion over the earth, and then he sold it out to the devil and uh, inherited a sin nature, and things became corrupt. And so then I was thinking about it. Where else do you go? And uh, I want to take us down to Romans chapter 8 here. Um, and I want to bring us to this stage here. In verse 18, it says here, For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that is to be revealed to us. And the Greek and the Leiden of the Teenwoordigheid not worthy to be compared with the glory that is to be revealed to us. 
the sufferings of this present time, Paul talks about. Now, Romans chapter 8, as we'll learn in a couple of weeks, is uh, forms the pinnacle of the gospel. This is where the gospel is moving to. This is the new life in Christ that we live. So Romans is the book about the gospel from chapter 1 to chapter 8. He's outlaying the whole theme of the gospel. Uh, what happens when a believer places his faith and trust in Jesus Christ alone? He's saved. Then what? Well, we heard through Craig's um, uh, message on Sunday in Romans chapter 6, we've been set free from sin, and we're now in a position where we are able to serve God freely, to worship him, to serve him, to offer the members of our body as living instruments, instruments of righteousness for the first time, not tainted with sin, for we are new creations in Christ. Then uh, Romans chapter 7, which I'll be preaching on this Sunday, how not to live the Christian life. And then Romans chapter 8 comes, how to live the Christian life. And uh, we read here in verse 18, for I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that is to be revealed in us. So in other words, we live in a Christian life, but we live in it in a world that is suffering, in a universe that is suffering. Look what he says there in verse 19, for the anxious longing of the creation waits eagerly for the revealing of the sons of God. And die skeppen wat uh, met reik halsende verlange op die openbaar maken van die kinders van God. The anxious longing of this creation waits eagerly. Uh, uh, it's waiting for something. It's waiting for the revealing of the sons of God. Uh, the sons of God, die kinders van God, uh, us at the rapture in our glorified state. Verse 20, for the creation was subjected to futility. Not willingly, but because of him who subjected it in hope that the creation itself also will be set free from its slavery to corruption into the freedom of the glory of the children of God. So when Adam and Eve, uh, when Satan sinned against God and Adam and Eve sinned against God, the whole creation became corrupted. Uh, with sin. That, and that is the damage that sin did to the, the whole creation. It's not just an individualistic thing. It damaged the whole creation. The heavens were defiled by Satan and um, uh, even the earth was corrupted. And so we have to see that, um, that the creation is waiting for to be set free from its slavery to corruption. It's decaying. It is corrupt. I want to take us to Second Peter um, chapter one. Let's get down there. Second Peter chapter one, where we read there in verse two: "Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord, seeing that His divine power has granted to us everything pertaining to life and godliness." through the true knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and excellence. For by these he has granted to us his precious and magnificent promises, so that by them you may become partakers of the divine nature, the Christ-like nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world by lust. There's a corruption in this world. The world is corrupt. It's decaying. Uh, second law of thermodynamics says everything starts good but goes to bad. Uh, and that's true of everything except for a believer. We go from bad to righteous. Um, and then we should be grown in grace and knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. So back to Romans chapter 8. Hmm. Let's go down here. Yeah. Verse 20, for the creation was subjected to futility, not willingly. The creation didn't want to, but because of him who subjected it, God cursed this world, cursed Adam and Eve, cursed the serpent, cursed the ground, and by the sweat of your brow and the hardship and thorns and thistles, it would produce for us in this life. 
So there's a suffering that goes on in this world because of the curse of God upon this world, all as a result of sin. Uh, what is sin? Sin is rebellion against listening to God, rebellion against him. So, um, but one day the creation will also be set free from its slavery to corruption into the freedom of the glory of the children of God. Verse 22, for we know that the whole creation groans and suffers the pains of childbirth together until now. So the curse came upon the world and eventually then God judged the earth. The flood came upon this earth, the continents and everything was shifted apart. And uh, we have the world as it is. The mountains were developed. The sea was developed. Uh, all these things came about. The valleys and the highs and the lows and all of this were created through the flood. When we look at our beautiful Table Mountain, remember that that was created by a flood. The whole creation groaning and its suffering, the, change of, uh, the pains of childbirth together until now. And uh, not only this, not only the creation, but also we ourselves, having the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, waiting eagerly for our adoption as sons, the redemption of our body. So even us, I don't know about you, but this morning when it's so cold, you know, it's like, oh, I've got to get out of bed now. And then we groan and we moan. And as you get older in life, you get the creaks and the moans and the groans will intensify. Believe you me, for you youngsters, it's still coming. Enjoy your young life now without any groans and pains, but it's still coming one day. And so that groaning is a travailing in pain, waiting one day for our glorified bodies. And uh, we wait for it, uh, waiting eagerly for our adoption as sons, the redemption of our body. When this body is finally redeemed into heaven, into a glorified state where there's no sin, there's no corruption, there's no decay, there's no sickness, there's nothing like that. Uh, we are in perfect glorified bodies. Um, if you just come with me to First Peter chapter 1. This is one of my favorite chapters in scripture where we read there in verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his great mercy has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Because Jesus rose from the dead, we have a hope that we who have died with him are risen again with him, and one day we will follow him to glory. He's God on the head. Why? <clears throat> we have this hope to obtain an inheritance. We inherit the glories of heaven, which is imperishable, undefiled, and will not fade away, reserved in heaven for you. So that onse onverganklike en onbesmette en onverwelklike erfenis kan verkry wat in die jemela bewaar is vir ons. Wat in die kracht en vir God bewaar word dier die uh, geloof tot die saligheid wat gereed is om geopenbaar te word in die laaste tyd. We are protected by God because of our salvation, because of our faith in Jesus Christ alone. We are protected by God, by the power of God, through our faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. It has not been revealed yet. And, and that's a wonderful thing to behold. It's imperishable. It can never decay. There's no second law of thermodynamics in the new heaven and in the new body that we're going to be in. It's undefiled. There's no sin in this new body. And it certainly will not fade away. And it's reserved for us in heaven. That's for us who have believed in Jesus Christ. Isn't that amazing? And so in this, verse 6, he says there, In this you greatly rejoice, even though now for a little while, if necessary, you have been distressed by various trials. Now, trials come in all shapes and sizes, as we know. Uh, they can be small. The, the very smallest thing uh, can be a trial in your life. 
you lose your keys, you can't find them. Oh, that's only when you get older. Uh, you lose your keys and you can't find them and you don't know where they are. It can be a stress and a trial in your life. And that can range. Notice he says various trials. Allah handa proven it. That's up to the biggest trials as we've just gone through this week and uh, are preparing for the funeral tomorrow. Those are trials of huge proportions that plunge men into, into the depths of despair. But ultimately, uh, we can rejoice because we have a hope. If we had no hope, how could we possibly rejoice in the depths of trials? doesn't matter what size the trial is going to. The fact that we have a hope that one day we'll be out of this and we'll be in a glorified body is our hope, and that's a hope to be clung to. He says you rejoice, you greatly rejoice, even though now for a little while, if necessary, you have been distressed by various trials. Why does God allow trials into our lives? Well, he says here in verse 7, so that the proof of your faith be more precious than gold, which is perishable, even though tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. And though you have not seen him, you love him. And though you do not see him now, but believe in him, you greatly would rejoice with joy inexpressible and full of glory, obtaining as the outcome of your faith the salvation of your souls. Wow, what uh, an amazing thing that is. What a, uh, an amazing reminder that even though we're suffering, we're going through all these sufferings in our lives, at the end of this, there's a glory uh, that awaits us. Um, I remind you again that Jesus prayed in John chapter 17, verse 24, where he says to their father, I desire that they also, whom you have given me, okay, be with me where I am, so that they may see my glory, which you have given me. For you loved me before the foundation of this world. Father, ik wil dat dat waar ek is, hulle wat jy my gegeer, ook saam met my sal wees, so dat hulle my heerlijkheid kan aanskou wat jy my gegeer, omdat jy my lief gehad het, voor die grondlegging van die wereld. O righteous Father, although the world has not known you, yet I have known you, and these have known that you sent me, and I have made your name known to them, and will make it known so that the love which you have loved me may be in them and I in them, that I will dwell in them. So uh, an amazing um, reminder that Jesus is saying that our destination is a glorious one. And that's a glorious hope that we need to keep alive in our hearts day by day as we live in this corrupt world. Okay, um, one more place. Let me show you again, John chapter 14, verse 1. Uh, these famous words of our Lord, which bring such comfort to our hearts. He says, Laat jylle hart nie ontstel word nie, gloon God glo ook in my, en die huis van my vader is daar baie woonings. As dit nie so was nie, sal ek dit vir jylle gesê het. Ek gaan om vir jylle plek te bereid. Now listen, and as I go and for your plek bereid, come I weer and sal your name to name, so that your work can be where I is, 
in bad ik je en gaan weet jelle en die weg ken jelle. Toen men zei voor al wieren, ons weet niet waar hij gaat niet. En nu kan ons die weg ken. Jezus antwoord om ik is die weg en die waarheid en die leven. Niemand komt naar die vader behalve dier mij niet. So in other words, don't let your hearts be troubled in this world. Believe in God, believe in Jesus. I'm going to prepare a place for you so that you can be with me. And when you're ready, when I'm ready, then I'll come and fetch you so that you can be there. Isn't that amazing? That Jesus will go ahead of us, prepare this place for us. But then he says, I'm coming to fetch you because where I am, I want you to be there with me. And the way that I'm going, you know the way. I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. Amazing verses, once again, an amazing truth to cling to. What is the way? Through the cross. What is the truth? That I died for you, paid the price for your sins, was buried, rose again on the third day, and all who believe in me shall be saved. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved the truth okay and we get to god the father in heaven now let's go back to romans chapter 8 verse 23 where he continues now talking about the groaning so we ourselves groan having the first fruits of the spirit even ourselves groan within ourselves waiting eagerly for our adoption as sons, the redemption of our body. For in hope we have been saved, but hope that is seen is not hope. So we don't hope in anything in this world, nothing that you see, because that's not hope. If I hope in hope, uh, that's not hope. If I hope in something that I can see, no, that's not hope. For who hopes for what he already sees? But he says in verse 25, but if we hope for what we do not see, with perseverance, we wait eagerly for it. In the same way, the Spirit also helps our weakness. For we do not know how to pray as we should, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. And he who searches the hearts knows that what the mind of the Spirit is, because he intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. You know what? The Spirit of God prays for us. He takes the groanings that we have. Oh. Those groanings, the context is the creation's groaning. We are groaning. Uh, we find it difficult to live in this world. We are suffering in this world. Uh, in all sorts of trials and tribulations, and deep inside us, we groan. The Spirit of God is not groaning for himself or anything. He's groaning. He takes our groanings. He intercedes with us. With those groanings, he takes them, uh, which are too deep for words. Sometimes we don't have words for anything. I was asked, how do you minister to people that have just suffered such a, a, a huge loss? And my answer is you just love them uh, without words. You don't need words. Sometimes there are just no words. But there is a groaning. And we groan together. And uh, sometimes that's the best way to love people. And sometimes we've got to be very careful what we say with our lips. Um, but if we are not thinking carefully, we can say the wrong thing. And I always counsel people going through grief and trauma, be careful. People are going to say stupid things, the wrong things, because they don't know what to say. They feel they must say something. But let me counsel you. Sometimes there just are no words. And uh, Job excoriated his counselors. He said they're worthless counselors. Uh, they, they thought they, had it, they knew it all. Job, you've sinned against God. That's why you're in this position. And Job knew he hadn't sinned. He was a blameless and righteous man, upright in all his ways. Uh, he was clean before God. And they tried to investigate him and prove that he had sinned against God to, to land up in such a predicament. But uh, 
they should have kept quiet. They would have been better counselors if they had just kept quiet. And sometimes, uh, brethren, there's, there are just no words. And uh, sometimes it's just to be there with the, your loved ones, just to be with them, love them, care for them, hug them, groan with them. And the Spirit will take those groans and intercede them and pray on our behalf. And then verse 27, Hey, what die harte dir soek, weet wat die bedoeling van die gees is, om dat, dat hy ooreenkomstig die wil van God vir die heiliges intree. You know what? We find that Jesus prays for us and is praying for us and is interceding for us. He knows the mind of the Spirit. He knows what the groanings are. And he prays for us as well. He intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. That God will be glorified at the end of the day. That we will continue, our faith will hold firm to the end. That our faith, no matter how big the trial that we're going through, will stand the test that we'll be able to persevere and that he will bless us in the end. A good example of this is found in Revelation chapter 2. And the church at Smyrna, Revelation chapter 2. Let's go down there. To the church at Smyrna, verse 8. And to the angel of the church in Smyrna, this was the suffering church, the first and the last who was dead and has come to life, says this. So uh, notice that the first and the last, Jesus, who was dead. In other words, who suffered unto death and has come to life, says this. I know your tribulation and your poverty, but you are rich. How are we rich? We are rich in Christ. We have been blessed with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. We have been seated up in the heavenly places. And uh, we are rich in Christ, in, in the glory that is to be shown and revealed to us. And he says, I know your tribulation and your poverty, but you are rich. And the blasphemy by those who say they are Jews and are not, but are actually a synagogue of Satan. He says, do not fear what you're about to suffer. Behold, the devil is about to cause some of you into prison so that you will be tested and you will have tribulation for 10 days. Be faithful unto death and I will give you the crown of life. Wow, and you say, sure, be faithful. We're going to go through this tribulation and expect the Lord to say, yes, but don't worry, I'm going to bring you out of this tribulation. He says, now be faithful unto death. Then I will give you the crown of life. Mm -hmm. Then you will have the eternal life. Then you'll have the glorified life. Then you'll be in heaven. Hear as an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. He who overcomes will not be hurt by the second death. Let's go back. Um, Romans chapter 8. Okay. Um, what did we get to? Okay. So uh, we, we come down here to verse 7, that Jesus is praying for us, and we come to verse 28. In ons weet dat vir jylle wat God lief het, alles ten goede meer werk, vir hylle wat na sy voorneme geroep is. And we know that God causes all things, the good things, the bad things, these trials, these tribulations, these groanings, God causes all things to work together for good. And listen to the, the qualifying phrase here, to those who love God to those who are called according to his purpose. In ons weet dat vir hulle wat God lief het, alles ten goede meer werk, vir hulle wat na sy voorneme geroep is, called according to his purpose. And that did insluit al die uh, verdrukkene en leidsaamheid en alles, 
and all this pain and tribulation and all of that, God says, I can take that and work it for good. And sometimes it's very difficult, brethren, to see the good in what God is allowing into our lives. But I tell you what, when, when, you, can, when you can look back and say, thank you, Lord, for doing that, for allowing that, for teaching me along the way, that is truly when you have learned the lesson. So all things work together for good for those who love God, uh, those who are called according to his purpose. Ah, for those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to become transformed, to conform to the image of his son, so that he would be the firstborn among many brethren. Van die wat hy van tevore geken het, die het hy ook van tevore verorde neer om gelijkvormig te wees aan die beeld van sy sien, so dat hy die eersgeborene kan wees onder baie broeders. Why did God predestined you to be saved? Well, to be conformed to his image. Okay? He didn't select some, elect some by predestination to be saved. No. Those that are saved, he's already predestined before the foundation of this world that when you get saved, you would be conformed to the image of his son. You can't stop on one word, predestination, and then build a doctrine out of that. No, those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to become conformed to the image of his son. And that's what he's doing in our lives on a daily basis. The sanctification, the heilig marken, and ons levens, op het dagelijks en manier, met alles wat aangaan in ons levens. Everything that's happening in our lives, God is busy using that to change us, to conform us uh, to the image of his son. So what does that mean? Well, he wants you to be like Jesus. He wants you to think like Jesus. He wants you to act like Jesus. He wants you to speak like Jesus. He wants you to look at the world through the eyes of Jesus. He wants you to listen to people carefully so that you can respond like Jesus Christ. He wants you to be Christ-like in every which way that you live. So what are you doing with your hands, your feet, your body? He wants you to be like Christ, and he's busy doing the work, and he's using all things to do that. And um, so that he would be the firstborn among many brethren, so there'd be many Christ-like. So the early Christians were given the name Christian, which means little Christ. And that was a, um, probably a derogatory name. Ah, oh, you've been just like Jesus. You've just been like Christ. Actually, it's a blessed name, but uh, it was given to them. Christian, little Christ. You're running around like little Christs. Oh, that's a good title, eh? So that was Christian means, little Christ. And uh, those who before knew he predestined to become formed to the image so that he would be the firstborn among many brethren. And these whom he predestined, he also called. How did he call you? By the gospel. And those whom he called, he justified when you responded to the gospel. When you heard that Jesus Christ had come to, to seek and save the lost, to die for your sins, to pay the penalty for your sins, that he did that, he went to Calvary, died, was buried, rose again, and you put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ after believing it in your heart, you confessed it with your mouth, you called upon the name of the Lord to save you, he justified you, he declared you righteous. We learned about that in Romans chapter 4, 5, 4. And um, you have peace with God. And those whom he justified, he has also glorified. We just haven't got there yet, but we're going to get there. And so we have a wonderful hope that ultimately we are headed to glory and we'll be with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So I really just wanted to encourage you with these words tonight, that even though we're suffering and there is suffering in this world, we're living in it, but we can suffer with hope when we groan. The Holy Spirit takes those groanings and takes them to the Lord, who then prays for us. And so we have God, the Holy Spirit praying for us, God, the Son praying for us, 
standing by, ready to help us because he understands what, uh, what we are going through because he himself went through exactly the same. He suffered living on this earth. He suffered to the point of death, sweating blood, first of all, then died on the cross. So he knows exactly what we are going through. Uh, Hebrews chapter 4, we'll end with this. Verse 14. Therefore, since we have a great high priest, and we'll look at this sometime. Uh, I'm busy studying through the book of Hebrews right now, and I can't wait to, to start studying this book with you guys again, because it's such an amazing book, such a, a rich book. But we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, uh, uh, Jesus, the Son of God. He says, let us hold fast our confession that we are truly born again uh, Christians. Let us hold fast our confession. Why? For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses. Our weaknesses when we come under pressure. But one who has been tempted in all things as we are, yet without sin. So he knows the, uh, the fasukana that we suffer sometimes. He knows that we've been tempted and we get tempted. How does he know? Because he lived here and he was tempted by Satan, uh, by others. And the trials and the tribulations that came upon him, he went through it. And we have a faithful high priest, a high priest uh, who can sympathize with our weaknesses. He understands exactly what we're going through. He didn't sin, but he knows our weakness. Look what he says there. Therefore, let us draw near with confidence to the throne of grace so that we may receive mercy, so that ons barmatigheid can verkry en genade vind om op die rechte tijd gehelp te word, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Do you need more grace? Perhaps you need mercy. You need forgiveness for sin. He, he'll forgive your sin. And then perhaps you need grace not to sin, but to live for him. There's an open invitation from our great high priest. He says, come to me. I know you. I understand you. Come. I'll be merciful to you. And come. I will be gracious to you. I will give you as much grace as you need to live for me, to live the glorified life, a victorious life, even in the midst of this fallen world. So I hope this encourages you to cling on to the hope that we have. We are all living in a corrupt world, uh, but we can still live a glorious life in this corrupt world as we choose to live for him, as we choose to live by the word of God, as we choose to live in submission to the spirit of God and be led by the spirit of God to glorify Jesus Christ, to glorify our heavenly father. That is the way to live. We are to live that way, even in the midst of suffering and groaning. So may the Lord bless you. So let's hear any comments on this. I'm going to stop sharing now. And if you want, you can put your videos on. And we can see who's who. And anybody got a comment that they'd like to share? Okay, so let me start. Halbert. You there, Hobbit? No. Mike? So I'm very quiet here now. Uh, let me see. Can I open your mics? Pastor Kel? Yes. I don't. I see Mike's just unmuted. Maybe he wants to say something first. 
Okay, Mike, you got something there? No, Cal. David can speak. Okay. <laughs> yeah, sure. Okay, David. I'll say this last uh, few days I've been watching the some of the chaos that's going on at the moment, but uh, one thing that's been on my mind quite a bit um, from from work, we've been quite targeted around Pride Month, um, yes. especially our international uh, offices are pushing it in a huge way. Um, and it is exactly as Romans once says, is, you know, they want us to celebrate it. You know, it's, the first phase is get educated. We need to understand them, you know, that kind of thing. Um, I don't know if you've also seen Woolworths is also punting it in a big way and they're quite, uh, oh. quite heavy on it. Um, and I think we're going to get it more and more. I don't think this is uh, going to go no, away. No, it's all um, Definitely. But, yeah. um, but I see this as quite a trial. And I expect at work each year it's going to get worse and worse to the point where it's going to become mandatory. It's going to become something that's going to be expected of us to take part in. Um, so the time's coming when we're going to have to be ready to make that decision. You know, do we, mm -hmm. What do we do with this trial? Um, and I think there's more, more examples of that. Pride Month is just one of them. It's not, not the, you know, the main... It's just one example of yes. these trials yeah. in everything mm -hmm. that we're going to have to face and, and somehow maintain our witness um, mm -hmm. in a, in a you know, godly and loving way, but still... You know, um, honor the Lord in it. Uh, yes. so I think, I think, yeah, this is it's just one more trial that we're going to have to go through or are going through at the moment. Yeah. So I think what uh, the best thing we can do is formulate the response and have a ready response. <clears throat> yeah. Um, when that time comes and when we get pushed into a corner or something, how are we going to respond to this? So yeah, let me do some thinking on that, and um, we can think around that. Yeah. Okay, and have and and build a, a response, a godly response uh, to this uh, pressure that's coming on the world, and even in our own society, uh, more and more. Yeah. I see a lot okay. of what people are expecting is that you just capitulate, you just go. What does it matter? Yeah, I, I think that's yeah, that's not the right way to go. Mm. No, I think uh, how to change that into a gospel message uh, is yeah. the best, and yeah. how to share Christ mm -hmm. uh, is part of the response, at least. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, David, for raising that. Anybody else got uh, something they want to add in? Chuck, Peter, Stefan? Yes, well, you know, uh, Cal, you stressed the point that this earth is cursed uh, right from the, the fall and it's it's ironic that that the world is trying to bring peace you know the, the United Nations and before them the <clears throat> what is it, the League of Nations and peace conferences and stuff and yet there's no peace and people don't re those people don't realize that the only real peace is is in the one who uh, can cure the curse and yes. that's the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for that. Yeah. He is. Okay. Anyone else? I can, what, I can say also, uh, uh, brother, is that um I hope is that it doesn't end here. Um it, what we're going through is is sometimes um you know, especially if it's been if one goes through art for over a long period of time is uh to to take it to 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 Jesus to our Lord um as we just now read in 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 in, in Hebrews 4 is that mm -hmm. he knows what we're going through um he's actually gone through the ultimate hardship one can think of um, even if we read Jesus' prayer in John 17 and, and also um, 
also when he went to Gethsemane in the garden there, we sweated like uh, like blood. Mm. Um, he, he's gone through it. I know, uh, as you said, uh, to 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 try to comfort one, <laughs> best, <laughs> often it's just to give a hug and say we yeah, um, sure. just like Jesus is yeah with us, um, and then. We are faithless in in what lies ahead for us when when we get to to the end when he comes and fetches mm -hmm. uh, fetch us. So yes. um, we've got this hope, and it's a very special hope. Mm -hmm. We mustn't forget that, and especially when we're in despair. Uh, and it's good mm -hmm. that we remind each other: look, we're looking forward to the crown, uh, to what mm -hmm. he's going to give us, and and mm -hmm. and. Be steadfast in that, in that hope, and not forgetting that we've got this hope. Sure. Thanks, Joe. Yeah. Uh, who's A? Hey, Amy. Uh -huh. uh, there's a Amy. There's a A Zoom user. I don't know who that is. Um, all right, anybody else got anything to say? You can put your hand up. Uh, put the hand just there. Or not. Okay. All right, so thank you for being here tonight, guys. Um, let me close this in prayer and uh, be praying for the service tomorrow. Um, for for those of you who are coming, uh, we're good to see you there as a way of encouragement to this family. And um, it should be quite a big crowd there, I think, tomorrow. And um, for those who can't, please be praying for the, the service and uh, for the burial of little Finn. And uh, that uh, God will be glorified in everything that is done tomorrow. So let us close in prayer and then... Uh, we can be dismissed and uh, hope you all stay warm uh, with this storm that's coming over us. All right, let's pray. Father, thank you. Thank you for your precious word and thank you for the encouragement from your word this evening and for the hope that you've given us. Ah, what would you do without hope? A hope in a glorious future, a hope in a future that is um, unspotted, undefiled, imperishable, that cannot never fade away. Lord, we long for that day. We long for the day when we'll hear the trumpet, when you will come, when you will take the church off the earth. But as we live out our lives here, Lord, even in this fallen world, we do pray for your mercy and we pray for your grace, Lord, to continue with us, to help us through each day and uh, help us to see the opportunities. And even in the face of the opposition and even in the gay uh, issue, Lord, the pride and all of this, that we face in all these challenges, these hostilities towards Christianity, that we might have a ready response, that we might have a reason to give for the hope that lies within us and to be able to share Jesus Christ with a lost and dying world. Our Lord, I pray that you would lead us, that you would guide us, keep us safe through this night. And then Lord, we just pray for your comfort. And grace for Devet and Michaela and their family, and uh, even for little Ilya as well, Lord, who may not understand all that's going on right now. But we just pray for the family, Lord, that you would be with them, that you would bless them and encourage them, that you would strengthen them, Father, and help them through this service even tomorrow, Lord. And so we give you thanks for your goodness to us. And the fact that you are praying for us, that the Spirit prays for us. Thank you for being such a great high priest to us. Might we love you even more, Lord, because of this. For we pray this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Good night, everybody. Sleep well. You can unmute. Good night. <laughs> Good night. Good night. Thank, thank you, you so much, Cal. Everybody. Good night. Thank you. Well. Thank you. Good night. Thanks, Good night. Yeah. Thank you. Stay tight. Stay warm. Cheers. Bye bye. Bye.
Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye.